Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not going to deny it. I'm stood here extremely nervous and uh, uh, looking out at, at people that I'm striving to be like and, uh, and who I admire how they farm. And, uh, and I'm really surprised and honoured that Michael asked me to speak on behalf of myself and my family. Um, I'm not going to tell anybody to get their heads out their backsides. And I'm not going to show any pictures of Glenn Lucas and asking him to drink milk, a lot more milk. But uh, I am going to talk about my family, my dad's family, and where we started and how we've got to where we are at present. I'm sorry about the photo, it's a great way to start, but here we all are in our working clothes. We're a very strong knit family with a real strong team unit. We really do work as a team, and we are extremely keen on pedigree stock, myself, my father, and my brother. We work alongside kites, as John has already mentioned. A little story about how we were introduced is, uh, I'll mention it again within my speech, but I remember John being sat at the kitchen table, and we were sat down talking about the industry and where we were intending to go. And John sat there and he looked at us and there was three of us, all starting off, me and Paul with uh, two wives and obviously dad with, his, with, uh, with mum, all wanting to uh, milk cows. Not being able to split the herd because it just wasn't economically viable. We knew that we had to develop it with uh, ourselves on the one, one farm. And, and John was sat there in front of dad and he says, uh, Mike, uh, you're going to be milking... 300 plus cows, more commercially. Well, I looked across the kitchen table and I looked at Dad and I thought, oh my God, John's going to get this. I can just tell by my Dad's look. That Dad's going to hit the roof. Dad loves his pedigree. He spent 30, 40 years with, with his brother developing pedigree herds and to be told that he was going to be running a pedigree herd more commercially didn't really fit too well. But I have to stand here and look at John and say, you were right. And, uh, but... We still love our pedigree cows and we still breed that way. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, obviously, we work with Edward Lott, who is a partner within the Kite Consultancy. And also recently, uh, Mike Bray has joined ourselves also with Kites doing our nutrition. We work very closely with our vets, uh, MacArthur Gibbs, and uh, they are strongly enough to help advise. And we are very much there, I want them to be used more as a preventative than there to be curing. A little bit of history on, on, on how we got to Greville Hall Farm. My dad farmed with his brother, my uncle Randolph, who's actually in the room, and I'd just like to take this opportunity to congratulate you on your appointment of being the president of Holstein UK. With three boys, my uncle having a son as well, me and my brother, all mad keen on pedigree stock, my dad knew that the farm based in Somerset wasn't going to be big enough for all of us to be able to farm. So over a few years, uh, my dad started looking for a farm. Obviously, uh, finances were not going to be there to be able to go out and buy a farm, so it was always going to be based on finding a tenancy to be able to move into. And this opportunity came in 1995, actually, I expect most of you will know the herds Avondale and the people that run that, Allen and Roseby Shufflebottom. Well, they were based at Greville Hall Farm. And in 1994, 1995, they decided that, that, that they had had a lot of fun within the industry and that they were going to sell and retire happily, which they did. And it was this opportunity where my brother was happened to be working for them that a conversation was made saying that my father was looking for a farm and what was the opportunities of being able to move there. And things progressed, and in 1996, uh, papers were signed, and with a private deal done, we moved into Greville Hall Farm. My dad moved there with 46 cows and 56 followers. The farm consisted of 325 acres in a 12-12 forward milking parlour with enough cubicles for 120 and a loose yard for 30. When we moved to the farm, we knew that the farm was tired and it was going to need a lot of investment from ourselves. 
but also from the landlords. So in 2003, as a family, we decided that we were going to stay within the milk industry, but we were going to have to make a lot of changes to the farm. So with help from the landlords and a lot of investments from ourselves, we decided to redevelop the farm. So in 2003, we sat down with John and Edward, our consultants, and began setting out a budget to rebuild the dairy complex. But also kites have been there and are still with us there to ad help advise on the future and where we are uh, intending to go. The decision was, met to, was made to at least double our numbers and at that time we were milking 100 cows. Let's see, I'm not moving my... Uh, here we go. The budget then was based on 17 pence per litre, believe it or not. And fortunately we never got down to those prices. I think when the complex was put up, prices did start to increase. So I stand here and say to you, as an industry, we have been there before. And I know we are going to go through difficult times now, but we are resilient, and I believe that together we can pull through it and uh, we will go on to better places. Anyway, in 2004, we moved into the new complex. The complex consisted of a brand new site of 180 cubicles, all sand based, with outside feeding. Also, the parlour was changed from a 1212 forward to a 2424 Westphalia, but the stallwork was made to fit another four units on the back, which now has been done. So it is a 2828. Rapid growth. And it was for us. Within 20 years, we've gone from 325 acres to 830. From 100 cows to 400 cows within eight years. From 1.1 million litres to 4.4. I'm not going to stand here and say it was easy. It wasn't. Our belts had to be tightened. Me and my brother worked hard. Didn't take a lot out of the business because we knew the business was our future. Also, an opportunity came when we had a bank manager just arrive on the farm and sat us down and said, would you uh, consider moving banks? It's not something my dad would ever have dreamed of doing. He was very loyal to uh, bank managers and people within the industry that he had worked with. But he sat there, we had a meeting, he spoke about what he could do for us, and the decision was then to move. And what a great decision that was. It enabled us to expand even further. It enabled us to fill every cubicle space quicker, which enabled us to the farm to become more economical. So this is where we are now. Like I said, we are at 400 cows, 830 acres, and 340 sand cubicles. Over 12,000 litres per cow, sold per year at 3.8 fat, 3.1 protein, and a calving index of 395. Like I said, the farm is all rented, all on an FBT over 25 years, which we are now 15 years into. So we are not owner occupiers. To uh, create funds isn't as easy. It's all through the, the things that are on four legs, the cows, they are our capital. The farm is run on a private, by a private charity with 12 trustees that sit within a committee with one agent that oversees 3,000 acres, which we are very lucky enough to have 840 of, which we acquired over the last 20 years. The acreage is split into three, basically, with 300 acres of maize, 300 acres of wheat, which 400 tonnes are fed back towards the cows, and at the present time, we grow 300 acres of Italian ryegrass, which is a two-year lay, which really does fit our uh, uh, crop rotation. The loose yard was converted from 30, uh, 30 cows to cubicles, which will now hold 50. And anybody that come and joined us on the Gold Cup would have seen an old farm pack building, which the landlords were not willing to take down, so we knew we had to utilise the building. 
So we gutted the inside and refurbed it, and it now fits 100 more cows. A dry cow has been built, which holds 60, and at the moment is bedded on straw, but we have discussed whether we should be putting cubicles in there for the dry cows or eventually for more milkers. So let me take you on a tour of the farm. As you can see, the calf unit is all run through hutches. They are born, they are given eight litres of colostrum, are very similar to what everybody is probably doing within the room as well. Then they will go on to uh, two litres of raw milk twice a day for 10 days until they are feeding adequately out of the bucket. This is when we will move them over to a once a day programme. The once a day programme we use is uh, a product called Shine, which enables us to feed the cows once a day. It is a butter and skimmed milk powder with two litres of whole milk and one litre of water and 250 grams of the product. This enables us to get 750 grams of dry matter into the calves. The calves will enter the programme around 45 to 50 kilos, and we are expecting the calves to double their weight in growth by weaning. From here, the calves will go into another shed, which will hold just four. We feel the calves will get used to, com to competition and enable them to uh, get used to being with other calves. From here, they will move off into the heifer unit. This is where they will be in groups of 20. And they're eventually, here that you can see the three groups where they're on three and a half kilos of an 80% blend and ad-lib straw. The ad-lib straw comes from a bell just being placed in the pen with the strings cut and where they help themselves. And we find that the growth rates are fantastic through this stage. From six months onwards, they will go on to a TMR ration, which is based on uh, grass, molasses, and a blend. The heifers will eventually get bred at 13 months, with either an embryo being implanted or sex semen being used, and then a bull will enter to sweep up. We are trying to bring the heifers in as young as possible. We are averaging at the moment 2.2, but we are trying to get closer to two, two years old. Moving on to the dry cows. The dry cows, like I said, are on a loose yard bedded with straw. It is cleaned out every four weeks to reduce infection, which is really important. They are fed on a high fiber, low energy diet, which really we think has worked well. Before calving, 12 hours, they will be given a calcium bolus. And then post-calving, they will also be given another bolus with 30 litres of fresh start drink, which contains all the right vitamin, minerals and calcium. From here, they will move on to the fresh cow yard. The fresh cow yard is where we make sure that these animals are right before they enter the main herd. It is most important that every one of these cows are inspected every day, making sure that they are clean and healthy and there are no problems. All cows that are just uh, slightly dirty will, be, will, be, will get used with Metrojets and also penicillin will be introduced. There will also, any, problem, any, any cow that we fill is just slightly under the weather, will have 25 litres of a fresh cow with also glycol which will be pumped into them to help prolong their life through the dairy sector. From here, they will move on into the milk and cow unit. The cows are all fed on one diet. We just feel it is uh, far better and far easier. Uh, we've, our, milking index, uh, our days in milk is around about the 180 mark and we find that feeding one diet to the cows is, is easy. And here you can see that the, the price it costs is about £3.40 per cow per day. You can see they're on 20 kilos of maize, 20 kilos of silage, Three and a half kilos of blend, and with the advice of Mike Bray, we moved on to rape mill away from soya on a cost purpose, and we find that we've had no problems doing this. For our starch, we are using caustic wheat with molasses, and then as you can see on the rest of this, our small with butterfat extra, urea, and yeast will be introduced as well.
Here are our key performances. We always strive to be better and be the best at what we do. The coal rate of 26 may be low to some, may be high to others. But with the introduction of, uh, of 30 heifers, which we bought recently, it enabled us to become a healthier, younger herd and enabled us to maybe cull out cows that we felt that were not performing or were not economical. The calving index and average days of milk, I've already said, and we are calving in cow heifers, hopefully at two years old. Our submission rates and conception rates, we are really pleased with. They've improved ever since we put in a heat detecting system. We try and breed the cows at 45 days, and the heifers will be bred will be bred a little later if they have calved at two years or under. Milking is done three times a day at home, starting at 5.30, 2 and 9.30. We always have two people in the parlour. The protocols are really important to us, especially that we have European workers that have been with us for seven years, Martin and Sharik. Protocols are to strip seven, spray seven, wipe seven, attach, and then move on to the next. Within the parlour, before I, we talk about the next slide, sorry, within the parlour, we have also uh, introduced ADF. It's something that we have helped aid milking, and it stopped cross-contamination, and we have also found that it's improved teat quality. As I mentioned earlier, when I spoke, to, spoke about John, we're very much a pedigree herd, although now run more commercially. We believe in depth of pedigrees and classification. My dad and my uncle installed into my brother and myself at an early age that depth of family is important. If a cow cannot walk to the parlour, and if you cannot attach a unit to the cow, then what is the point of milking it? And this is why we believe in type and cow families. The Roses, Megs, Melodies and the Maries were the foundation to Morshard. They're all animals that have been successful in their own right, whether in the show ring or within selling progeny. The Meg family, especially for my dad and my uncle, turned over, over within 10 years in the 80s, probably in excess of 100,000 in progeny selling alone. The Melody family, a family that has had a lot of success not only for us, but for other people within the industry. Those families were developed at Morshars, the Goldens, the Assets and the Echoes, are the families that myself, my father and my brother have established at Chanel. Leader Marie, I was speaking to Glenn Lucas last night at the mill, and uh, I said to Glenn, where do you think showing is going to go, and what do you think showing will be in the future? And I agree with what he said. Showing for the pedigree farmer is probably one of the best ways to advertise any family. To meet people within the industry, to talk about pedigrees, to talk about cows. There's no better place than a show ring, whether you're inside the ring or outside the ring, to be able to talk about a pedigree family, a cow in that area, is no better thing. And for us, this was the pinnacle of our time in the show ring at Chanel, with Chanel leader Marie. I will stand here and I'll look at people out there, and I know that she wasn't the biggest cow in the world. She was a 59, 60-inch cow. But she was pretty damn perfect. There wasn't much wrong with this cow at that time. It was a fantastic day, and a day that the family will never forget. And that's why I believe in showing, and I think showing for the pedigree farmer is always going to be in the future. But this is where we start. Morshard K. Katie, the foundation to our type at Morshard and at Chanel. 
This cow did 14 lactations and then gave over 100 tons of milk. And look at this cow, you can just see that she utilizes all the type, type that you want to see within the dairy breed at an early age. But from here, we've gone to this. Chanel Bolton Golden. Probably one of the best cows and all-round animals we have bred at Chanel. I shall talk about this animal a little later. And this is our future. Chanel Observer Golden. An 86-point heifer has got all the attributes to be fantastic. All the attributes to become an excellent cow. She's got high milk, high fats, high protein. And there's definitely the potential to be a great cow. Since moving to Chanel, we've sold a lot of progeny. But one of the best animals that we sold and have enjoyed watching through the years is Chanel Gelt Pro Melody. Bred from an excellent Rudolph and an excellent Prelude. And this animal actually goes back to the first herd book in the UK. We sold her for 3,400 at the Holstein Elite Sale to David Booth and family. And David and his family have probably had the most success with this line. They have flushed her and been successful. But in the first lactation, after a great year in the show ring with her, they decided to sell to Tom and Andy Cope in partnership with Isaac and Luke Lancaster, again at the Holstein Elite Sale. But they sold her for 20000 which opened our eyes up a bit, should we have waited. Anyway, Tom and Andy took full ownership of her and had a great deal of success in the show ring, with the pinnacle being the winner of the Royal Show in 2006. At this time when they showed this cow, we were shut down with TB for two years. And if it wasn't for selling her and us having our prefix on this cow, our name wouldn't have been used as a shop window. But because of this cow and because we sold her, it was. I'll briefly just talk about the bulls that are be, we are being used. I stand here and I was here now. My brother manages the cows. My father is there to oversee and advise. I will feed, buy feed and run the arable. My brother is very keen on his genomics and on, his, on the right bull doing the right job. And here is just a list of bulls that are now being used. At, at this precise moment, they are all 100% genomic. We feel that we need to focus on fertility, health traits, fat and protein. And with genomics in the four, in the, in the four at the moment, it is the best way to get there quicker. Calves that are on the ground, you can see. We're really pleased with the bulls that we have used and the calves that are running around, especially Heavenly Golden Dreams have been a real success, an observer, and Will Tour Cruise. I'll just run through a few of the cows that are on the herd that we feel have a great future. This cow here is a page wire Lazori. She is a VG89 two-year-old. Second cow, I, I, I apologize. But she is a total outcross, a cow that we feel we have a future within the bull cells, and a cow that has two galaxy heifers on the ground. We're trying to develop and grow the herd. Most of the funds were going back within the milking system. But me and Paul were always wanting to go out and buy new families. But at the time, we couldn't. But our neighbour approached us one day and said that he would like to invest within pedigree stock. And me and Paul grabbed him with two hands and said, we would love you to invest. So with £20,000 to spend, my brother and myself went out looking for families. And two families that we come across was Morning View Shuttle Asset and Nova Goldwyn Echo. Two families that we brought in and two families that have been really successful in a short amount of time. This one being especially successful, Alexander Asset. And also, there we are, the Nova Goldwyn Echo, who has bred Jeeves Eroy. 
And Chris Tallis, who invested the money, has doubled his money and more so since investing. One of the families that have been really successful for us at Chanel is the Golden family. The cow that Dad bought in a cell down in the southwest, he paid 4,800 for. He brought her home, and me and Paul just wondered what he actually had bought, just by looking at her, thinking about how wrong we were again. The Roy produced a shuttle golden. And her alone has probably netted us over £20,000 worth of livestock sales. And also produced Bolton Golden. Like I said previously, one of the best animals that we have bred at Chanel. In her first lactation and throw five days, she gave over 16,000 litres of milk. Then went on to a flush programme, where she was flushed to IOTA. These embryos were sold back into Europe, but an achievement that we are really pleased with, that we actually sold embryos back into Canada, to CMEX Canada, where two of the bulls were placed within their bull program. She then went on to milk for over 600 days and produced over 30,000 litres of milk in her first lactation. She is a tremendous cow. She has bred a sedan, Palmero, and Lothority. And here is the Lothority Golden. I have that is 87 points, and at present just has a single bull by Super Sire. And those were just a few pictures of the cows and the families that we have at Chanel. And here's probably one, if not the best day we have had in our farming lives. The day that we were awarded the Gold Cup in 2012. It has been a dream, an achievement, it was, sorry, it has been a dream for the family and my dad for many years. My dad's been farming and breeding cows for an excess of 50 years and has watched farmers and breeders of the highest caliber win this award. So when we felt that the farmers was at the right place economically and with the buildings pretty much finished, we decided to enter in 2011, where we were runners up, which was a great success in itself. But to determined to be the best, we entered again. And in 2012, we were successful. And it was a dream for the family and for my dad, and a fantastic shop window for the farm and for the prefect. And I would encourage anyone here to enter this competition because it really does make you focus on your business. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand here as a 35-year-old man and I still consider myself a young man who's starting out within the business alongside my brother. I believe there is the future within the dairy industry. I want to milk cows. And I believe with the help of the industry, and if we pull together, this will be achieved. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for listening to me. I hope I haven't bored you too much, and I wish you all the very best through this turbulent time within the dairy industry. Thank you.